Hello guys, uh, my name is Igor and uh, I'm here to show you how, how to paint on your phone, basically. Alright, so uh, there's a couple apps that I use. Um, I have them in a drawing folder. Uh, the first one that I use is Brushes. This is an old app that's actually no longer available on uh, iTunes as far as I'm aware. Um, but they have an updated version, um, which is this blue one right here. Uh, I don't use it pretty much ever because I like the interface on this one um, and it's a little bit just more simple um, but the downside is the resolution is limited and uh, you're also limited to four layers instead of um, I think this one allows a couple more um, I also have sketchbook uh, mobile I like this app um, I use it every once in a while just for fun but um, We'll go ahead and go into brushes since it's a free one that you guys could try out without any sort of, uh, well, you don't have to pay. The only the only thing you would pay for it are extra layers if you wanted to. So, you know, I'll go ahead and click the plus and start on a new canvas. Uh, the resolution is uh, 2048 uh, by 2048, but we can size it down, I think, for a little bit more speed. I'll just do half. So... 1024 for both and I'll keep it a nice square one um, because if I upload it later to Instagram or something you know I don't have to crop any of the piece out um, so you have your brush settings and all that I like to use a simple uh, sketching tool in the beginning for um, uh, that's to create extra brushes but um, a simple sketching tool just to lay out my design which usually takes you know when you have an I when you don't have an idea of what you're doing, it could take up to like even 20 minutes just playing around with the composition and just the idea itself. So you know, I'll just pick a straight black um, three pixel line, and um, I zoom in with my fingers. You know, that's how the app works. And I do a lot of zooming if I want a really controlled stroke. So for example, you know, I'll do like a circle. Um, I turn the opacity down so that each pass doesn't have to be perfect, you know, allows more room for, if your opacity is high up, then the lines are basically just a lot more visible. But um, turning it down gives you a little bit more freedom. It's just a preference thing. So let's say I'll just start drawing a face. I don't know of what. Um, this will just be, you know, for examples and uh, the way that I generally put these together is um, again just more of a preference thing it's not it's not the correct way or the incorrect way to do it you can't really just tell somebody if they like doing something some way that um, they shouldn't you know unless they're asking for advice um, so whatever we'll do like a quick sketch just a black and white. I'll show you guys the process of how I go about rendering each one of my paintings. And um, sometimes I'll use a different, uh, different approach. Uh, but um, generally, this is like the main, the main way, the main process of putting something together from beginning to end. So I'll go in with in a sketch. Um, you know, uh, this could take anywhere from. 20 minutes to just get the idea down to cleaning up that design for like another 40 minutes uh, or so. Sometimes it's a lot uh, a lot less when um, I already have it planned out and it just just works and everything comes together nicely. But other times, you know, where you have those days where you're just nothing's going right and it takes a bit longer. But um, I go in and I put all the little details where I want them. Obviously, you want to get just the the majority of the design down first and not worry about all the little subtleties but okay so for example let's say I got my first layout this weird looking frightened guy I'll give him some hair um, what next you know how do I go about coloring it or figuring out what sort of colors I'm gonna use so um, the way this app works right here again I don't use this app as often but um, since you won't be able to use the one that I use, which is brushes, this is brushes three. Um, I'll just go ahead and showcase this one. So uh, you tap, you know, you tap to have your interface pop up. There's the undo and redo buttons down here. Um, I think that these allow you to undo 
you know, easily over like 50 times, which is um, one feature that Sketchbook doesn't have. But you have like the settings over here and there's like desaturate and all that, which brushes one doesn't have. So I never even got a chance to play around with all of these and transform layer. Wow. Okay, so I'll go to layers and I'll get me another layer by clicking plus, hold these three little bars and drag it down. Again, there's all um, there's a couple more layer customizing options. That's cool. So we'll go ahead and grab this one. We could even turn the opacity down on the top layer to uh, really allow us to see where we're putting the colors down. Um, so I'll grab a thicker brush just so I can fill in colors. So we'll go with the 35 pixel. Again, same simple stroke, nothing fancy. Um, so once we have that selected, we'll go into colors. And I'll give them like a darker, uh, earthy skin tone color, I guess. And um, I'll just drop that down fill in basically my main goal is to eventually get rid of um, and I can use um, I can uh, turn the opacity all the way up and just to get the color down um, but my basic goal in the end is to get rid of all these lines so that it's not like a comic book style um, you know unless you you're into that you could definitely you know work that into your final product but um Basically, I'll go in and I'll color everything, and as the color, um, you know, starts shaping into my original design, um, I'll add highlights and um, and shading, and that'll substitute for the lines. So, for example, you know, um, I might be using weird colors, but that's just for uh, time's sake, you know. So you guys aren't sitting here for an hour watching more than you know learning so I put down let's say a color and I want to define this jaw area so I'll drop something a bit darker and I'll go in um, with let's say a seven point um, a seven point line and I'll just outline the bottom um, a quick way to to blend um, you see how I just hold my finger over the screen and it allows me to use the color picker. If I have the opacity turned down a bit, I go over it once, the color lightens up just a bit and then when I grab it, it'll basically be the color between what I am um, painting and what I had uh, previously selected for the darker rim. So when I want to soften up the edge, you know, I'll go in a few times grab the edge of uh, the stroke that I just made and since it'll be lighter than you know what's underneath it as in the chin line you know um, it'll yeah it'll basically blend into itself after a while um, so let's turn down the opacity on the top layer so just so I could see exactly what I'm doing underneath I want to start getting rid of these darker outlines. Although, yeah, yeah, like that, right there. Okay. Um, and then you know, uh, basically, this is this is what I'll be doing. Uh, what I'll be doing to get my final piece to look, you know, the way that I want it to. Um, for for eyeballs, you can drop the color in, and you can separate layers quite easily uh, when you're experimenting. You know, for for color, um, <clears throat> for example, colors that you aren't sure about, or just uh, details that you're wondering if they're gonna look good or not. Um, easily, just drop those on a layer above whatever you're working on, and um, again, you can use the same process of first sketching it out with just a black outline and then going in and coloring it or just uh, try actually just coloring above whatever you were doing um, that's generally a way that um, I'll go about putting those uh, parts or details that I'm unsure about together so for example I got my little eyeballs here then we'll go ahead and uh, keep yeah I'm not used to these settings as much so I keep going into the wrong things but as you get used to the app you'll you know speed up and be a little bit more time eff efficient if that's what you s decide to stick with and eventually um, basically if you want to you'll learn 
So it just depends on how motivated or how dedicated you are to doing this. So like I said, this piece is looking, it's a bit weird. I'm not at all being serious with this one. Um, maybe later on I'll record a longer, more in-depth from beginning to end painting, um, depending on if that's what you guys actually want to see. I have a couple time lapses, but I might do a time lapse with a voiceover. I just don't know yet. So, so yeah, see that looks weird. I can just undo it a bit, grab a color that I think would match a bit more. And uh, these these tools that all these apps give you are basically enough to uh, to come up with your final result um, or a product which which technically most painters should be able to come up with um, without you know the use of all these uh, color burn and all that other stuff um, effects that maybe a lot of Photoshop's artists uh, Photoshop artists are used to and a lot of professionals use um, but the beauty of that is not having those effects is that you don't end up overusing them you know as let's say somebody who's still a novice who's learning who's experimenting a lot of times you'll over blend something or you will well you know what I mean so just having the simple tools required to create uh, or enough of the tools that allow you to create something um, that you know you basically allows you you're capable you should be capable enough to um, create everything that you could ever want uh, out of you know a digital painting um, this is basically how I learned how to digital paint I started back in 09 I think just experimenting and um, editing photos you just import them into a white uh, onto a white canvas and then you can go ahead and drop it drop a different layer and start uh, going at it and adding whatever you want all sorts of fun little effects and there it wielded some hilarious results um, my cousin liked them a lot so I did a couple more of my friends and all that and then eventually I just decided to uh, do actual paintings and I started with um, I started with uh, drawings on paper that I took pictures of uh, since I was, I love using, you know, pencil and paper, and that was a medium that I was really comfortable with, and it allowed me to have really good control before I figured all this out, and I basically went in to do the, um, the coloring on the phone, and the coloring, uh, which I didn't really understand because I didn't have much knowledge of a uh, phone, um, phone type um, I, I didn't I mean not phone uh, I didn't have much computer uh, painting knowledge back then and I mean I'm not trying to say that I'm like this all-knowing wizard nowadays as well it's just um, I guess in the couple of years that I have been using it you know I'm more comfortable with it than I was before and hopefully this will help somebody uh, one of you guys um, who has been trying to figure out how this whole phone stuff works and maybe got frustrated because there's not like any straightforward tutorials on the web um, you know hopefully this motivates you or encourages you to try it for yourself because I think it's great it's a great learning base for anybody who feels a bit too intimidated um, to use the computer or doesn't have a tablet like a Wacom and just wants to try this out to see if it's something that they want to get into in the future or just you do as a hobby um, I say go for it you know it's a free app if you like it stick with it if not well maybe you lost like half an hour of just doodling which you otherwise would have spent on playing a game or something so no no big loss there okay so let's say that I got the this is looking like some weird Picasso or I don't know, but but maybe not, because I'm not a master painter like he was. Um, so let's say that I'm happy with where I'm at. Where to next? 
Um, well, generally, when I, I probably would say that I'm never really fully finished with a bunch of paintings that I do, even on the phone and all that. Um, although the screen size isn't that big and there's not that much content that you could fit in there. But just with, uh, as you would with traditional painting, um, the, the phone paintings, you know, you could keep adding detail for days if you really wanted to. But uh, I guess it just comes down to, you know, what is your purpose for the painting? Are you working for a client and there is specifics that have to be done? Um, for me, it's not. It's just a hobby that I do, something on the side, and um, I do it for fun. So when I'm bored of a specific painting that I've already put a couple hours into, I'll just be done with it. And um, I'll bring it to a, you know, a version which I feel is uh, gets the point across and you know, hopefully doesn't look too messed up or too messy. Um, I could include, you know, general tips on uh, technical stuff in these tutorials, but I would say that that's something I'm still learning myself, and, um, you know, maybe, maybe it's not the best thing for you to hear because I could be, uh, I could could be saying the wrong things. Um, so I'll just stick to uh, helping you guys understand the tools and. Um, maybe sharing my process or my understanding of this stuff if you really want to but uh, in no way is this you know is this the correct way to do things because I'm not even somebody who went to college I'm self-taught um, I've only been just drawing on paper and uh, just doing this over the past years uh, got me to or wielded you know what you see here which this probably isn't the best representation of what I can do, but this is just for you guys to understand. So, okay, so uh, just to show you more of the app, because it's already, um, I'm already spending a little too much time on just trying to clean this thing up. Um, you know, you can, if you want to sign your piece, you just drop down to about a two or a three pixel. You can zoom in a bunch, and I'll show you, you know, that's how you can accurately write or draw what you want um, people are like how do you how do you see something so tiny well I mean you're able to zoom in so you zoom in I don't even know why I just put a P uh, that is not my name at all um, oh the eraser oh the eraser is up here that's a good tool to show might as well so let's go up to it four pixel the, the two is a little too small turn the opacity up a bit even more so just drop my initials and then the year that it was done I do that for most of my paintings just so then when I look back a couple years later I can have an understanding of you know progress I've made and or whatever so we have this uh, also like I said if you like that stroke look for you know comic style you can always either include it on the same layer which you've colored things on but um, but you could always I think to delete this one let me see again I don't oh you just select it and you click the delete button up top um, or you could just always make a new layer and um, draw the the stroke look on top of it so that way if you don't like it how it looks after a while can just undo and then for, forget about it. Uh, this uh, this uh, app also allows you to, I guess that's why the, it's called brushes, it uh, emphasizes on creating custom brushes for you know people who want a specific, de a specific detailed brush for trees or for, um, for clouds and I'll show you, a, I'll do a quick uh, a quick example of um, you know whatever of the customization that it allows you to do so you click the arrow I think and there you go so you begin with a bunch of different bases for um, what the brush would look like if you were to do just a single click of it you know there's everything from this hash looking thing to a bunch of little swirls so you definitely want to have a couple of basic brushes you know that are just a simple circle to um, 
you know you want to start with a couple different varieties of those and you change the hardness here this would be more of an airbrush feel compared to more of a pencil and then the intensity um, I don't even know I guess the opacity would also change this but uh, this is again for a little bit more of a softer feel the angle the angle doesn't matter on the circle brush because it's circular uh, but on something like this um, the angle see it's just spins it around so if it's um, a flat brush like this the the angle would change the way that the brush looks as you're painting um, if that even makes sense the spacing just uh, if you want less of a brush and more of a stamp, I guess, uh, spacing does that pretty well. Or if you're doing this cross hatch, um, the spacing, you know, this looks more like a fence. That's just squares and uh, combined, this is more of like a textured uh, brush. Uh, jitter. Uh, this randomizes, I think, if I'm not mistaken. It's, oh, okay, no, no. Um, when jitter is off, all the, the strokes are uniform. And when you turn it up, each one is randomly spun, basically creating variety and giving you more of a texture brush instead of a um, effects brush. And scatter um, takes them off the horizontal axis, you know, um, varies them vertically. Uh, up and down so that it scatters it even more. That's why it's called scatter. Dynamic angle uh, changes the angles on the edges in the beginning of the stroke and the end of the stroke. So more variety, dynamic weight. Uh, this shifts between, you know, you start off strong and then it goes into a very, you know, it almost disappears. Like the opacity drops, the size drops and the brush gets closer together or the other way around where you start off almost non-existent to the um, ending with the final effect of the brush that you have selected and dynamic intensity also turns that up so if I turn it up to a hundred the beginning uh, I think is actually no opacity so you wouldn't even see it um, and ending with uh, ending with the full brush or vice versa hopefully you could see these on the on the GoPro, maybe I'll try to record with something else um, later on if if it's still not that visible. Then there's a Bluetooth setting. I don't know what this is for. Um, some sort of accessories. Oh, I guess you could use stylus and all that, but I don't have a stylus. I just use my finger. I like it. Um, you know, for somebody maybe who has really fat fingers or can't get used to it, you could go out and get a stylus, but I wouldn't be able to give you any advice on that since um, I don't have one myself. Then you have settings for filling a layer, um, inverting colors, transforming the layer, which I believe is uh, just the layer itself. See, so I have some of the outline stroke on a different layer, so I can change it up. I can make it smaller, bigger. I can accept it, cancel it, flip it horizontally, flip it vertically. That's pretty cool. Um, that really allows you to play around with if you keep your character on a separate layer from the background You could always shift them around a bit and uh, get the desired position uh, Place photo so that's uh, importing I think um, Paste image. I don't really know. I guess all these are little settings that you could play around with I haven't gotten around to using this app that much then this arrow key up top um, Adds adds this to photos post on Facebook. So this is basically your exporting uh, key. So let's go ahead and add it to photos. I would allow brushes to use them and we go into that and there we go. We have our little photo and I can always grab this photo and import it back in but it will be collapsed. Uh, the layers will no longer be there. Um, they'll all just be one layer so it's not very good for if I want to fix you know some little details when it comes to the background I would have to cut everything out or redraw a bunch of things so I generally don't do that the final product that I put on my phone I put on my phone as something that I won't go back to fix alright so um, that's done let's also see uh, I have a different painting that I was working on uh, in here that I just never got around to doing and I'll play you guys a quick video of how it goes together and this is from this was going to be another one of my um, bird slayer series where 
these are worms who fight birds and this is like a fully armored uh, worm and uh, I'll go ahead and yeah that's another cool thing about this app is it records you know your painting process of whatever you just did so um, you'll see how first I'm playing around with you know getting the correct shape and making sure that um, the object doesn't look too too flat so I go ahead and start drawing in the eyes and the helmet I'm probably going about this wrong or at least um, looking back at it seeing how I should have I should have drawn it uh, more of circles first and uh, so I'm still not happy with the way the worm is shaped and then now I'm like okay you know what that's fine um, because of foreshortening the back is supposed to be lighter once I paint it and smaller but um, like I said with the helmet or with the uh, the needle that he's holding needle sword or the shield uh, I'm only drawing uh, parts of those items when I should be giving you know drawing the full full shield just so I could see uh, e I mean even if you can't see all of it I could later go back and erase it but just so it makes sense to me uh, instead of uh, you know kind of just uh, eyeballing it so I'm going in and dropping a base color for the worm himself I drew a little chest uh, chest plate shield attachment or armor attachment on him and uh, for the for the arms I'll do the same color as the base color on the worm you know he's not going to be wearing gloves it's probably a little bit too much uh, too much uh, l small detail that won't be noticed since it's already you know kind of a small picture so the helmet will be you know a gray color again this is all like base stuff and I never finished this one this painting so you won't get to see me you know putting on finishing touches or even working on the background on this but um, as of right now the the top layer is still the beginning sketch that I started with just so I keep having that reference to whatever I'm working on I'm doing the eyes uh, made the white part of the eye uh, be a little bit darker and then go in with a lighter light color like white or a little bit of a lighter gray to really you know make them look 3d and um, just pop a bit and then I shade it around the eyes um, since the helmet would most likely be uh, not allowing the light to hit it as it would other parts of the worm. So I went ahead and drew in the arm, uh, drew the straps, and yeah, I pretty much stopped there. I think I will keep working on this guy and eventually once I finish him, um, maybe I'll do a full video uh, and explain, explain that. But I really like that this thing records um, my paintings and maybe I'll be able to export the video and just use that instead of having to record a video of a recording um, so that it's easier for you guys to see and easier for me to work with and yeah just all that good stuff so so far this has been you know basically a test video for me and hopefully a quick tutorial on helping you guys get into um, the whole phone drawing thing if that's what you really want and uh, hopefully I'll do more videos in the future um, of just other stuff uh, and as well as an iPad tutorial since Procreate works a little bit differently and has a lot better features I think than an iPhone and it's not limited to such a small screen so stick around for that maybe if you want um, you could obviously subscribe and or like and share and all that other good stuff and hopefully my commentary will improve in the future as well since I have never really done one of these. So yeah, thanks guys and uh, have a good day.